Hi, so it is more than possible to make your own solar cell, and if you have a look at make your own solar cell, you'll see a couple of versions, actually. The most popular one uses cuprous oxide. There is one showing you how to make a disensitized solar cell. They're quite cool, but the one that you see all of the time is where they take the copper sheet and turn it into a solar cell. Now, the solar cells that they make aren't particularly um, powerful. You're getting around about two to 300 millivolts, something around about there, so not massive voltages, and certainly in the microamp output, so not massive ampage. But it does teach you a lot about how to go about making solar cells, and if you're really interested, you can get into the background of it from that, and I think for that reason, they have great value. But there's also something else about them. When they um, make them, the traditional method is to take a bit of copper plate, give it a good clean, stick it on a hot plate and burn it until it goes black. When you've got a nice thick black crust on it, then you knock that black crust off and you've got some red under there, which is the copper oxide that you want, because there's two forms of copper oxide. There's copper one and copper two. Copper one is that red stuff. Now that's photoactive. It's actually a native P-type semiconductor. The copper two, which is the black stuff, isn't, and so you get rid of it. Now, as a production method, obviously, it's a little hit and miss, uh, and your coating is uh, cracked and, and very uneven, and those are parts of the reasons why they don't work particularly well. Now, it is actually much... Um, it's easy to make a much better coating, and that's what I'm going to share with you here. Now, what we have here is some copper mesh. It's as easy to get hold of as copper plate. This is just a fine woven mesh that I use in battery electrodes. But it's almost transparent. And I'll, I'll give you a view of that in front of the camera. That is the copper mesh in front of the lens. So transparent, no, but actually really quite see-through, as you saw. And that's a good thing. So if we take this kind of material and we treat that, then we're going to get a much better result. One of the reasons we're getting a much better result is the material's better. Now, all you actually do with that is stick it in an oven, in air, at a minimum of 230 degrees. So you can actually do this in your household oven. The better temperature is 400 degrees, and it takes about 10 minutes at 400 degrees, and you get this material. I'll give you a close-up of that, actually, because that's actually quite difficult to see. So that material, which is a kind of purple-red colour, is the copper mesh that's been cooked in the oven at 230 degrees C for 30 minutes. I also make this material by cooking at 400 degrees C for 10 minutes. So getting the material actually was as a bit of a challenge to do a video on it because how interesting can that be? We cut a bit of that off and we put it in the oven and out comes that. So kind of difficult to demonstrate that really effectively. But what we've done is we've taken a better quality material and we've given it a process that's far more controlled. Now at 400 degrees centigrade it's the tendency for red copper to form but to form in nanocrystals. So they grow out as little hairs. And they're on a wire, so that wire is obviously a circle, and they grow out from that circle perpendicular to the surface, a bit like an urchin, so lots of points sticking out like that. And they stick out all over that surface, and that surface is relatively transparent. So the sun can get in there and do its job. And those urchin cores have all got a copper centre to them that's all joined up and <laughs> coming to the edge here. So having a slightly better material with a more controlled process, what we should get is a device that works much, much better. Now, they're quite simple to make these things, actually. Once you've got your treated copper, what you do is get a current collector for the other side. And of course, I'm using graph oil. And the reason I'm using graph oil here is to prevent that uh, idea that there must be a reaction going on. We'll cut off a bit of our beautiful material put a separator in there, and the traditional electrolyte always used on these kind of solar cells that you see on the web is salt water. So that's a little bit of table salt there in some water that we've got, and we put our treated copper on there, and then another bit of plastic on top. And that is our solar cell. So now what we're going to do is take this outside into the sun and see if something happens. So there's our little cell in the sun doing about 0.2 of a volt.
These copper oxide solar cells in themselves are fun to make and they're great to explore the science but they don't put an awful lot of power out but they are the basis I think for developing our own solar cells. Now we need to take more care rather than just chucking a plate on top of a, a, a hob and hoping it's going to cook properly but not that much more care. Like I say, in air, in an oven, 230 degrees, 30 minutes, or 400 degrees, which is better if you can get there, for about 5 or 10 minutes will form you the right kind of coating that you're looking for. Then we can modify that, play with it, and make better solar cells that we can actually use. Real solar cells that will approach the power of current solar cells that we can make ourselves. Now there's going to be a few videos in this series because, because I've been playing with that. So I'm going to do updates on this a little bit. This basic one, not to lose sight of it, is just a replication of every other single copper oxide solar cell out there, just made slightly better. And you'll find that the voltage and the power output is just exactly the same as every other copper oxide solar cell. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. We will be doing more on this and thank you for watching.